a massive lever in order to get those funding, the, fund, the funds that we need. The capacity building needs to be there. And I think more organisations need to provide on hand capacity building support to enable us to get the grants. And once you've got that, the possibilities are endless. My second organisation that I ran, I set that up five years ago after I went through breast cancer, and I set that organisation up. In five years, my turnover this year is about to be £300,000, right? And that was because of the experience I had setting up that first organisation. So once you've got those skills, the possibilities are endless. The problem is, we don't get the people to help us to build those skills. Yeah. And that is what I want to see more of. Yeah. Because I tell you something, as organisations now, and I think about me five years ago, in the position I was in, if someone turned around and said, I'm going to give you a hundred thousand pounds, I'm not going to lie, it would have been great and I would have said yes. But would I have had the capacity to think about the future of that five, mm -hmm. that ten thousand, uh, hundred grand? Yeah. Would I have been able to supply all of the monitoring that they need for that hundred grand? Mm -hmm. Would I be able to find another hundred grand to sustain the hundred yeah. grand they've given us? We need more support in building the organisations and the capacity. That's exactly what the funders need to do. Because the larger funders don't have the access to the participants that we have. They don't even have the lived experience that we have. So we really need to work on capacity building. And I mean not stupid people coming in and sitting us down for one-to-one -one support saying you need to do this and you need to do that. No, we need people who are accountants, people who can sit with us and talk to us about compliance and policy writing. Yes. We need people yes. who can sit down and help us hands on, not tell us what to do, help us write these things so that we've got all this paperwork in place to apply for funding. Thank you. 
lots of funders have got a tendency to, to fund organizations for projects, but what we're talking about here is not projects, it's actually talking about the support, the infrastructure support that organizations need on top of delivering activities. Linda, would you agree with that? Yeah, yeah. I totally agree with that. And a, um, an organization that I work for, an organization I work for, um, fantastic, they do just that. The name is, uh, if you look them up, it's called the, the Social Change Agency. Okay, it's run by uh, a bunch of young, 30 plus, um, really um, vibrant young people. They have their fun out there and um, their skills, their valuable skills, things like decision making, um, structuring. And they work with grassroots organizations. And um, they help, how they work is that they would help a, a, an organization. <laughs> work up, build up. <coughs> but things like governance, things like structure, things like uh, looking for funding, um, things like getting your message out. They'll come and they'll spend time with your organisation and literally workshop with your organisation, work it through, yeah? and give, uh, show you where you can get resources to then build on afterwards. And once they've worked with you, they don't just leave you there. They will keep on coming back as and when you need to help and support some of the out there for you. Yeah? So it's fantastic. The other good thing that they uh, also do is because they have a wonderful ability to go to funders, um, big corporations, big uh, funding uh, bodies, and encourage them to release money in their direction, they're able to give seed funding to organizations as well. So literally they'll come, we've got to be right here, they'll get you structured, they'll get you working, they'll get you to recognize what key things that other families have mentioned in place, and then they'll give that seed funding and walk with you and make sure you work towards success. <laughs> and when finally, the other fantastic thing they do, um, I, meant, I heard earlier on that a few organisations mentioned that uh, because they're unconstituted, they don't have bank accounts, they don't have access to bank accounts. This organisation, they, uh, they run this platform and it's called uh, Fiscal Hosting. So this is where uh, they act kind of like a bank account. So you have your platform there, and that platform you can set up and use it as they go fund you. So you can put that after donations. So yeah, you've got all your information after donations. People can come on and donate to you. So they um, can also um, add to the same like a, like a banking, where you can, where the funds come in, and get every single track, every gift, you can ever see what's going on there. Yeah? Once money come in, you can then pay uh, your facilitators, by um, either just um, uploading an invoice or a receipt and within a couple of days it gets paid out. So that takes all the back end out of, of that financial sort of worry and admin. And yes, but I'm going to have to, 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 to wrap up because we, we've only got a few minutes and a number of different points. But we can all come back to that uh, and maybe the question and answer. So, trust and relationships. Uh,
know, um, we've been working for literally nothing. We've got no pensions put aside, and you know, and that's what we need to look at when we're talking about long-term funding for groups, organisations, and their staff. Thank you very much, Sarah. Right, I'm going to quickly go around the panelists. Uh, so, just to summarise, long-term funding. Uh, lots of organisational support when they get the funding, but not too much, really, right? No, no, but it's just different, no? right? So, there have been some changes, there's still more to do. Linda, in 30 seconds, how do we keep the funders foot on the pedal? 30 seconds. <laughs> turn them, or the new You can't turn them, what you need. Tell them again, what you need. <laughs> okay, thanks. Really, how do we keep the funders foot on the pedal? We don't want them to get off the pedal. 30 seconds. How do we keep the funders foot on the pedal? We want them to accelerate, keep it on the pedal forever. How do we do that? Um, show them the picture, just the, the reality, and um, just show what you're doing, and um, give them an, an image of what you're doing so that they can understand it. Thank you very much. Leanne, we'll go to the end. 30 seconds. Um, yes, uh, same, I think that you just have to um, tell it like it is, express your lived experience, express your trauma, and just um, just keep on asking the funders how they can relate to what we're experiencing, what our community are experiencing. Okay, thank you very much, panelists. Now, we're going to do a quick Q&A, question and answers. Any questions to the panelists? Uh, what, what I'd like you to do is put up your hand and then what I will then do, with the support of my colleagues, we will take you in the order that we see your hands go up. Questions to the panel? Tyrese in the middle. When you say you guys, who are you talking about? I'm talking about community service. Okay, okay. community yeah. service. Yes, yeah, it's just a question, and I don't know the ties you guys have. If you guys just um, accumulate the funders, or if you guys have that like, connection with the funders, so it was just yeah. We've got lots of relationships with funders, but we can talk about that and how we can move that forward maybe afterwards. So, next question: Who was the next person had their hand up? Sorry, before the next person, Go on here. before, the, before the next person, then there was a quick feedback. Okay, I just want to feedback on that. Um, because, again, we're talking about diversity. A lot of the problems that uh, the groups have is that English is less than language. So they already have, they face a bit of an uphill struggle trying to interpret what is meant to. And as you mentioned earlier on, the mm -hmm. most important thing is read, read, read questions before you answer and understand the questions before you answer. But what funders are beginning to accept now, part of the funding application, are Wikipedia. Yeah. Oh, a few, yeah. a few. So if we can encourage more of them to go down that route, as my colleague said there, you can walk them into your experience of what you're doing. Thanks very much, Linda. So we've got one question over there, one question over there, and one question at the back. Hi, thank you, uh, Joyce, uh, from the Black Carers Foundation. And um, very interested, Sister Seven, what you were saying. You've got um, been able to unrestricted the funding and funders who are asking you what you need, and it sounds like a magic situation. Yeah. I am. Um, 
Are you able to share who goes out or come to this Are you able to put us in contact with bombers who are like that? Or bombers in the room, are you going to model yourselves like that? Because that, that's what we need. Like we're dying because we can't get the funding that we need because we're going to be important. We don't apply in time. So I'd love them to develop those sorts of relationships. How does an organisation like Joyce get noticed? So. Then, even when, I mean, we all, do, we all do it anyway. We just keep on doing the work and we keep on shouting about what we're doing and we, 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 make, we try to get ourselves noticed. I always say that, you know, we're, we're a grain of sand. Like, what do we have to do to get noticed as a grain of sand? You know, I was saying that, that one grain would get noticed. So you keep on doing what you're doing, you keep on shouting about it. Um, and sometimes you can like, start to target your, your media, social media app, certain funders. I mean, um, impact on urban health and St. Saviour's are the two organisations that I can say genuinely listened to what we were saying. They listened, they worked at, they worked at a place. We only have one staff and one part time. And they work with us at a pace that we can manage. You know, they don't have like, you know, your bombards and all these things you have to do. They work with us at a pace that we can actually manage, which is keeps us sustainable, it keeps us moving at the right pace. Working at a pace that you can actually manage. Hot tip, impact in urban health at United Sense Savers. Watch out for your telephone calls, you guys. <laughs> Question over there. Okay, David, I just want to explain to you this audience the work and the support that your organization is giving to us as black led community. Because when it comes to funding and people struggling with this funding, to my understanding, community support is a key to do that. But I'm not sure if you are a queue with enough staff to support the request you are receiving. Because that is where some people that have had personal contact with in this room, that was their experience. Thank you ever so much. Paddy, wants to do a quick response? Oh, sorry, I just want to answer my um, <coughs> question over there and also um, to what um, the lady here is uh, raised as well. Um, like um, Lenny said, um, if our organization was founded by people who couldn't speak English, so they, they, the, the English wasn't their first language, and they still don't understand. They paid their own blood from their own pocket to uh, make that the governing document, and they didn't even read it. Now, when I'm working um, with that governing document, they question, or is that, is that what it is in there? Yeah. So now they understand. So that how we um, they overcome that sort of challenge was that uh, we put uh, an advertise to uh, community seller. Um, that we need someone to write application for us or to work with us on the projects that we do. And if there are a lot of nice people there. They're very, very like genuine and nice people who would come to you and work with you to, to, to fill in those applications as effectively as possible. And we, we secured a few funds uh, through those kind of volunteers, which, which, which is really um, a way to go, like if you're dyslexic or Speak English, or if you don't understand the system, so yeah, yeah, that's that, that's that, that's what I'm saying. So, you know, I have uh, no, it was, it, it, yeah, uh, look, the experience of what I have dealt with the uh, community center as well. We did have a lot of uh, documentations to secure funds, and where the community center has helped us to get those in place in order to. But in, in terms of writing um, a funding application, um, I think if you go through a, a, a volunteer or um, someone who knows how to fill an application, that would be better than yeah, uh, going through an organization. Yeah. Thanks very much, Heavy. I'm just going to give a quick response to Laura, and you can only take two more questions. I'm sorry, two more questions are right at the back. Laura, we will take back what you just said. There is a massive big demand for support in Southwark for the type of support that we, we provide funding, governance, how to manage your finances. So all we can do is take that back. Thank you very much. 
Two questions at the back, and that's it. I'm sorry, guys. We've run out of time already. Two questions. One very quick question. Could you make them very short and clear and succinct? Thanks. Yeah, I'm um, Nikki from Angel School, this is an after school blog. I just wanted to know is there any particular language you have to use when you're applying for grants or funding? Because I'm exhausted. Um, I'm not getting paid for what I do. Nikki, um, so I've got a question. What's the take there? Any particular language that is needed to, <laughs> when you apply for funding? Can I just say that? This situation, this this is where it gets really interesting for small organisations and the frustration you can see it all yeah. in the room because we need more time to discuss these things. Yeah. We need more time to sit down and understand yeah. the intricacies. The language that's used is British English, and a lot of it's jargon. Yeah. And we're talking about yeah. people second lang. This is a second language. But what about if your brain doesn't need to compute that information and process yeah. it in that way? That's so right. it's layered. You, you cannot rush these kind of things. David, I'm challenging you to put on another session. Yeah. I will make time yeah. and I will come yeah. and, yeah. and I will yeah. tell yeah. you guys what to do. Challenge accepted. Can we have the last question at the oh, back, please? No. David, I'm really sorry I have to say this. This is the reason why I'm really passionate about what I do. I run a free activities for children in Peckham because I know the, the high of the crime mm. in the community where I live. And I do everything. As I'm leaving this place now, I'm going back to the center where they bring in children that comes in for, you know, free activities. We give them food, children in food insecurity. Children that, you know, their parents, they, they are not on no recourse to public fund. And it's very, very exhausting. I don't even know what to do anymore. Thank you. Okay, last question at the back. Thank you. Just come and see me at the end, please. Yeah? Yeah, um, basically, I'm here for Commune TV. Community communication TV. I'm good at new here. Welcome. Question, please. Question. 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 Basically, towards what Legal was saying, like we have to keep telling them what you do, or like, like it's not a peer pressure, but like, I mean, just let's know what you do. I'm thinking in that way, probably, um, sort of might be having what is it called, like, um, sort of festival awards so that people can be monitored. Basically, I'm saying like if we can have like Sadok Festival Awards, basically things that is going around Sadok, and then people will be having awards, and then we can help out and see exactly what some of this charity or um, what's going on in between the charities. Yeah. 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 Okay, very very good point. I'm going to have to close it off now, Linda. I'm so sorry. We've run out of time. Thank you ever so much. You've been a brilliant, attentive audience. Thanks very much for your questions. But I'd like us to round up with our panelists. Uh, Leanne on my left. My right. Yeah. <laughs> Leanne on my right. Stella, Paddy, Remy, and Linda. Could you give a big round of applause for our panelists? Thank you.